All right. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for joining us today. My name is Barbara Campbell and I am the executive director of the Dalton Foundation and get to lead the Relinks.org project here in Ohio. Uh, for a couple minutes, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about Relink.org as we have people uh, joining in. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Relink.org was started back in 2017. It's an online database uh, which started out as addiction recovery. That's why this is a great topic for us. It started out as addiction recovery providers as a way to map them and understand where Ohio needed resources and where Ohio had resources was how it started. It quickly morphed into a lot of other resources where now we have resources for the reentry community, which includes jobs, which includes housing. And we also added basic needs like food, clothing, shelter, uh, furniture, even as well. Healthcare is on there and also anti human trafficking resources. And then last year, we added family resources. So things like adoption and foster care and child care and family counseling. Um, it's designed to be kind of a one stop nonprofit uh, site for helping people connect with community resources that they need. Um, we're, we've been really blessed with the project. It's grown immensely. Last year, we also launched in uh, the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections uh, facilities. The Relink.org application is on all of the tablets of all of the individuals, uh, justice involved individuals. And it is our deep intent to help them intentionally plan their release and connect with all the organizations that they need in order to thrive upon release and to not, to not go back, right? That's the goal we all wanna have is to have everybody thriving and not go back. And um, before I turn it over to Tyler, I wanna talk about on those lines of what we we're just talking about the re-entry. Our, our next uh, webinar is gonna be May 17th at two o'clock. And the topic of that one is going to be affordable housing, where we're talking about some very creative solutions that the state of Ohio has been talking about and that some other uh, in the private sector are working on. And we're gonna have two speakers at that event. We're gonna have Matt Muma, who's the president of Scioto Properties, who do some very uh, interesting leasing programs to nonprofits to help them uh, be uh, be able to offer housing at a sustainable way. And then we're also going to have Gus Francos, who's the president of the Cuyahoga County Land Bank, who has started the Cuyahoga County Land Bank Foundation. And he's going to be sharing about the incredible things they're doing up here in Northeast Ohio uh, in order to get nonprofits literally almost free land and buildings so that they can open housing and open it up to individuals. Uh, that are in need. So we're really excited about that webinar coming up in May on May 17th, and we'll be sharing a lot of information uh, about that over in the next couple of, of weeks. But today, I'm thrilled to have Tyler here with us today from uh, Recovery Friendly Hamilton County, and we're going to talk about um, this topic, which is so important to us. We all know this numbers of people that are uh, affected by uh, addiction of some sort. And we all know that everyone has to be employed in, other, in order to be successful in this world. And so it just goes without saying that a lot of places of employment are going to have people in recovery. I know that that is a reality for us here, both at the for-profit business we're a part of and here at the nonprofit. And how do we best engage? How do we be a strong recovery-friendly workplace so that not only the businesses, the organizations thrive, but the individuals survive as well, because we know that will go hand in hand. Uh, Tyler's been great in connecting us with Recovery Friendly Summit County, and, and we've just recently joined that uh, as well. And I know, Tyler, you've been very instrumental in helping launch uh, this concept uh, here in Summit County. So without further ado, I'm really thrilled to have you here. And Tyler's got a great presentation today, and I'm going to turn it over to you, Tyler. Thank you so much for that introduction, Barbara, and thank you to all of you who are in attendance. Uh, Reentry is a subject that's very near and dear to me. I actually spent the first 10 years of my career in correctional rehabilitation, 
uh, doing cognitive behavioral therapy in various uh, institutions. So I'm loving loving to hear that that's good work that you're um, implementing as well at Relink. So afternoon, everybody uh, out in the cyber world. My name is Tyler Meenick, and I'm a health coordinator with Hamilton County Public Health. So Recovery Friendly Hamilton County is an initiative of Hamilton County Public Health based in Cincinnati, Ohio. And during our time today, I'm going to talk to you in a very general way about recovery-friendly workplace initiatives. We're primarily going to focus on the program that I operate called Recovery Friendly Hamilton County, which, as the name suggests, impacts the greater Cincinnati region. Um, I'm very happy to be here. This topic is something I'm very passionate about and I have a lot of ambition for. Um, so again, just thank you for being in attendance. And I want to start off by saying, you know, I, I'm sure that you all work in a variety of different fields, but I know that you share at least one thing in common, and that is an interest in either helping or at least learning more about individuals who suffer from substance use disorder. And that means a lot to me, both professionally and personally. So again, thank you. I'm really hoping to show you that by the end of this session today, that not only are recovery-friendly workplace programs the right thing to do on a humanitarian level, but it's also just good for business. So we can leverage the economic and the humanitarian angle to really push this forward in all sectors of the workplace. Substance use disorder has become such a huge concern and talking point for us as a country, particularly over the last decade with respect to the opioid crisis, that it, I really don't even need to preface this conversation by sharing a bunch of statistics and stories and anecdotes just to get your attention. Um, we really know what this problem looks like. We've seen it and we hear about it. And I'm guessing that if I were to take a survey of everyone on this call today, I'd find that uh, most of you have seen the impact of substance use disorder on a personal level, whether that's through friends, family members, loved ones, um, or even yourselves. And I'm sure that many of you have seen it firsthand just based on your occupations, um, you know, given that you're interested in these Relink webinars. But just to throw some of those substance abuse statistics out at you, because I love stats, According to a 2019 survey on national drug use and mental health trends, around 20.4 million Americans over the age of 12 were estimated as having a substance use disorder. And that is close to 10% of our entire population. So that's no minor statistic. I mean, this is us. This slice of the pie up here is, uh, these are our friends, our family members, our neighbors, our colleagues, our employees. Um, but for the good news, if 20.4 million Americans suffer from substance use disorder, uh, thankfully that number is dwarfed by the number of people who are in recovery, which is reportedly 23 million. And I like to say that that's 23 million people who've gone head to head with their personal demons, their naysayers, and really their brain's own biology and who've won and continue to win every day. Uh, and that's really remarkable to me um, as someone who can't even give up fast food for his health and well-being. Uh, I think it's really remarkable that people are able to give up highly addictive substances and lead a lifestyle that sustains that in the long term. So as I said, people in recovery, there are friends, there are neighbors, there are family members, there are colleagues. And employers can really play a massive role in helping to fight this disease and helping to eliminate the stigma of addiction and recovery. So in this fight, we really have to reach people where they are. We have to reach them where they spend their time. And where is that? Where are you all right now? You know, it's at work. With all of the grant money that's out there right now to help mitigate this whole crisis, it's really surprising to me that we don't spend more time talking about the workplace. Um, there are some statistics that estimate that over 75% of Americans who have a diagnosed substance use disorder are actively a part of the workforce. So whether you realize it or not, your own workplace is almost certainly home to individuals who are in recovery and to those who are still seeking recovery and battling their way through substance use disorder. And in the process, the business that you're a part of is incurring the cost of substance misuse through decreased productivity, absenteeism, turnover, training, all kinds of areas. Uh, the human and economic toll of addiction is just way too great to go unchecked in the workplace, and that's what brings us to our 
conversation here today about recovery-friendly workplace programs. So with recovery-friendly Hamilton County, what, what's it all about? What are recovery-friendly workplaces all about? Um, in short, the goal that we have in mind is to accelerate the success of our local workplaces by helping them support their valuable employees and job seekers who suffer from the disease known as substance use disorder. Um, I am effectively trying to be the liaison or to bridge the gap between the world of business and the world of treatment within Hamilton County. So in creating recovery-friendly Hamilton County, Hamilton County Public Health really wanted to also embark on a campaign that would battle the stigma of addiction and recovery, um, because people in recovery make tremendously valuable employees and community members, and we want to celebrate their triumph over their disease. So as you all can see here, um, we have got three major topic areas to cover today. We're going to go over the history of recovery-friendly workplace programs, including my own, um, information about what it is that we actually offer our partner businesses, so why they would join us or why they would become recovery-friendly in the first place, and then information about how to start a recovery-friendly program and what the requirements are on our end. So now uh, for a little bit of our history here. I did not come up with the whole paradigm for recovery-friendly workplace initiatives. Um, the model after which we're fashioned was created in 2018 by Governor Kristen Nunu of the state of New Hampshire. This is their logo up here. Governor Sununu, let me see if I can pull up his picture here. Uh, this is him. He is a former businessman himself. Uh, he actually ran a ski lodge in New Hampshire, and he saw directly the impact of substance misuse disorder on his workplace, and that it was taking a huge economic and human toll, not only on his workplace, but on New Hampshire workplaces in general. So he wanted to spearhead um, some kind of cutting edge initiative that would enable businesses to support people in recovery. Um, but he also knew that in order to make it viable, it had to be really, really easy to take on. And everybody here knows what I'm talking about. The main people that I'm coordinating with in this initiative are senior executives and human resources people. And they're all very busy. So it has to be something that is a very low lift in order for us to even get people in the door. So since uh, the New Hampshire program was launched in 2018, it has really taken the country by storm. It's a very exciting time to be a part of this whole network that we have across the country. And several states, counties, and municipalities have reached out to the admin staff with New Hampshire to receive assistance in launching their own recovery-friendly initiatives, and you can too. Um, and I'm more than happy to help facilitate that connection. Um, I have a good friend with the New Hampshire initiative named Samantha Lewandowski, and she and I have coordinated several times to help uh, other sites get their startup locally and across the country. Um, and I'm happy to say that I have a really good connection, and I would even go so far as to say friendship with representatives from each of these initiatives. And I, I definitely could not have done this without the support of these various states and counties doing the same work. And the great benefit for my constituents is that if they're asking me a question or looking for a resource that I don't necessarily have, um, I've got this dense network across the country that I can call upon to try and find out the answer to their question. So since the New Hampshire program launched, you know, remember they launched back in 2018, they've managed to recruit over 300 businesses uh, in their state, which I think is really just tremendous. And I want to spotlight one of them for just a moment to show you what a recovery-friendly workplace kind of looks like. Um, the gentleman that you see over here, his name is Mark Bonta. He's a really cool guy. He's become an acquaintance of mine lately. Um, He's actually going to help me out with my own pitch that I'm getting ready to do to another large company here. And he is the plant manager for a company called Genfoot of America. They're a Canadian-owned footwear company, and they're based out of New Hampshire, at least part of their operations are. And Mark was one of the very first people to take on the initiative in the state of New Hampshire. So he's one of the OG uh, recovery-friendly workplace people. And he has since become one of their biggest spokespeople whenever they need to call on someone to talk about this um, from the business perspective. He's there to help out. 
And for his business, what it meant to become recovery friendly, uh, first of all, he joined because in the early 2000s, he had to fire an employee who kept coming to work under the influence. And tragically, they died shortly thereafter. So it really hit home for him. And um, what it meant for him to join was developing a second chance program, which they didn't previously have or didn't have uh, to the depth it is today, which allows his employees, um, you know, the opportunity to return to work after having successfully gone through treatment. But more than that, one really neat thing that he does is he allows his employees to form what is called a second, or I'm sorry, a helping hands committee um, that supports employees facing difficulties with substance misuse. And what it is, his employees don't necessarily have to go to a plant manager or to HR to get support. They can go directly to colleagues who identify as being in recovery uh, who are recovering out loud. And overall, it's just a really great culture of support that he's fostered that's in keeping with the spirit of the initiative. And by his account, his return on investment, everybody wants to know about ROIs with this, are his improved retention and employee satisfaction rates. He's had several employees, I think around four from what he's told me, uh, who've come forward with a substance use disorder issue and who've successfully gotten through treatment and gotten back to work. And that is really tremendous to me, both on a human and economic level. And those benefits, there's something that I hear about from all of the recovery-friendly programs across the country. In particular, go to the state of Rhode Island here, some of their results. They surveyed 106 of their designated workplaces, and they found that around 69% of employers reported an increase in employee satisfaction and morale just by joining this initiative. And they've also got lots of promising stats. I'm not going to bore you all with those today, but I think that one in particular is very impressive. So that's a little bit of background on recovery-friendly workplaces or RFWs in general. Um, as for us, so at Hamilton County Public Health, I work in our harm reduction division. So in harm reduction, I'm sure most of you on this call are familiar. Um, we try to find new and innovative ways to reduce the harm that people suffer as a result of substance use disorder. Um, so for an example, we provide a lot of local organizations and individuals with Narcan for emergencies. Um, we've got a really terrific team here. Of course, I'm biased on that end. Um, we're funded by the CDC through an OD2A grant primarily, which stands for Overdose Data to Action, and we're in good standing with them. They really appreciate this initiative. Um, when my supervisors first created the position that I'm holding right now, they had a, a vision for assisting Hamilton County workplaces with addressing substance use disorder. And when I was hired, I started to do some quick research and found out about these other service models that matched the vision that we all had. Um, because we knew we wanted it to be something a little bit more expansive. And that's how I came across the great Recovery Friendly Workplace Network, um, specifically in the state of New Hampshire. And the rest is really history. I got to work very quickly connecting with other states who had their own initiatives. I called local businesses within those states who were designated. I called uh, designers to get our, the ball rolling for us and other folks to get things moving. And we launched in June of 2022. And I'm proud to report that in terms of successes, we have 29 businesses on board, actually 30 with one that joined yes, just yesterday. Um, and we also, you know, from this picture up here, you can see we won a Workforce Champion Award from the Workforce Council of Southwest Ohio. That was this past February. So it's all been very exciting. And um, yeah, it's been great. I don't know if any of you are based in Hamilton County, but looking at this list of businesses that I have currently, uh, there are some that are very recognizable. So it's been terrific to have their support this early on. All right. So now for my favorite part and uh, what you all really came here to hear to begin with, what is it that we're actually doing, right? What are we offering these businesses via this partnership that we have with them? So I'm going to go around this circle here and tell you about all the great things that we're offering our constituent businesses. Um, most of what we offer is very similar to the original New Hampshire model, but we do have some distinct services that we probably would not be able to do if we were operating at such a large level. Um, but because we're county um, and we really know what's out there, we're able to do it. 
So starting with linkage to care, let me pull that up. So at Recovery Friendly Hamilton County, we care about the employees of our designated businesses. And that's why we have formally partnered with the Addiction Services Council. We actually have an MOU with them. Um, they run a very important 24-7 helpline in our area to connect people with substance use disorder professionals. And uh, the woman that you see here is their CEO, uh, Lisa Mertz. She's a good friend of our organizations, and they were one of the earliest adopters of the initiative itself. Um, more importantly, what she's holding is one of our assets, which is what we provide to each of our companies and require that they put up from the onset, and that is our resource poster. So on the poster, which all businesses are required to place in a, a prominent space in their facility where their employees can see it, they're going to find numbers for the Addiction Service Council, as well as other 24-7 resource coordination agencies, and then a whole lot of other treatment resources. Uh, my personal work number is on there as well, so they're able to call me during my availability. And if you're really looking to start a recovery-friendly workplace initiative in your region, I recommend that you really reach out to your key providers because it takes a village. There is no way that I could um, you know, offer linkage to care and offer all the great things that we're offering if it were just me at the helm. Um, this QR code is a part of each poster. It's a unique identifier for each company so we can track data on how it's being used. If you're looking at the screen right now and you'd like to scan it, go ahead. Um, and when you scan that code, um, you're going to see all of the resources listed on the poster, as well as links to ordering Narcan, having it delivered to your home, fentanyl test strips, and finding other local sober support meetings and a lot of other great resources. All right, so let's go to trainings. So we really try to get our designated businesses connected with the right trainings to help them sustain this initiative. Um, at the health department, we have some trainings that we can offer like harm reduction supplies and their usage. Um, that includes Narcan and fentanyl test strips. I'll talk more about that in a minute. We can do some training on trauma-informed care and practices. Um, but more than that, we can also get businesses connected with some great online modules that exist already and are free of charge and that were designed by the state of Ohio with Recovery Ohio. So if you're not familiar with those, um, by all means, Google Recovery Ohio, look for their uh, workplace modules uh, because they're a phenomenal uh, resource for companies who are trying to sustain this kind of recovery-friendly paradigm. So lots of great stuff, all totally free of charge. I am also willing to develop something unique for a particular company. Um, to give you an example, one of my constituents is JBM Packaging. They're a manufacturer. Uh, locally, and we put together a good um, reasonable suspicion training for them that I did with my uh, wonderful colleague, Hanny Schilling, um, which went very well and that we've been able to offer to uh, other designees as well. So let's move on to something I'm very excited about, which is recruiting. This is one of my favorite things here. So I always like to say in the office, um, it's kind of like a tagline that recovering citizens are resourceful, resilient, and ready to work. Um, and recovering citizens really are largely because of the stigma, um, an untapped resource for employers. And according to the research, they offer a lot of comparative advantage um, in comparison to the average employee. There's a lot of evidence suggesting that people in recovery absorb less healthcare costs. They take fewer sick days than the average worker. A um, lot of benefits. And if the current labor shortage has really taught us anything, it's that employers need to adapt to changing circumstances. And by taking on programs like this, I think that uh, businesses are showing that versatility and progressive thinking um, to help them stand out among their peers. So as I was saying, uh, we've developed a recruitment avenue. So if our businesses want to hire talent directly from the recovery community and really kind of put their money where their mouth is when it comes to being recovery friendly, um, through our friends at the Workforce Innovation Center, we are off able to offer our businesses an online job board where they can signify their recovery friendly status. I'm gonna share my screen here for just a second and show you all what that looks like. So as you can see, 
they have a job board and there is a recovery friendly filter where these companies can signify that that is one of their perks. So if I'm looking for a job with, say, 3CDC, I can see that they are recovery friendly designated, and then I can connect directly to their available positions, which is great. We pop out of that. Okay. We're also planning to have, going along these lines, we're also planning to have physical on-site job fairs for our constituents in the future, which I'm very excited about. Um, we're gonna host those locally at our Ohio Means Job Center. Uh, that's still up in the air as to when we're going to do that. I think we're getting pretty big, so we might be able to do it sooner rather than later. And again, um, recovering citizens are great, and it's extremely likely that you're already working with people in recovery, and you may or may not be aware of it. And at Hamilton County Public Health, we communicate with a very dense network of treatment professionals through a lot of programming that we do. So we're able to spread the word about some of these positions with our constituent businesses. Now, one thing I always like to say, because I want to be very clear about the intent of this initiative, um, because it has been misconstrued by some of the people that I've pitched it to, um, we are not just a second chance employment opportunity program. There are a lot of great uh, programs like that out there. We're not trying to replicate or replace them. We love it when our designees hire people in recovery, but we certainly don't require it um, because we can't control anyone's hiring decisions for one. Uh, but more than that, we certainly can't expect someone to disclose their recovery status unless that's something that they truly want to do. So let's go to some wraparound services. So my position is actually kind of a, a joint collaboration between Hamilton County Public Health and Ohio Means Jobs, our local Ohio Means Jobs. That was how it was first kind of developed. Um, so through Ohio Means Jobs, what I try to do is just cross promote their job training reimbursement program and all of the great stuff that they have to offer because there are a lot of businesses uh, who just aren't aware of it. So we cross promote, cross promote the services that they provide via the PRC fund, the prevention, retention, contingency money, and the CARES Act funds to come cover the cost of things like rent, utilities, baby items, and bedding uh, for people who might be struggling. All great things, especially if um, you're a business who's hiring someone who's new to recovery and just getting back on their feet, those are things that they might really need in order to sustain their employment. All right, let's talk about promotion. This is another one of my favorite things. So simply put, this partnership that we do with these businesses, it is a public partnership. It is not a private partnership. I make that very clear from the onset. When businesses join our program, we're going to promote them and give them, you know, the social currency that comes along with it. I'm looking for businesses who are proud to say that we're recovery friendly. So not only do I give them vinyl decals of our logo, which is right up here to display in their windows uh, if they want, but we also promote their brand on our website and on our social media feeds. So remember, one of the overarching goals of this whole program is to promote anti-stigma and what better way than through recognition of workplaces who've taken the recovery friendly plunge. Um, I think we all know that workplace brands are important and they carry a, a very strong message to the community. We all know that businesses in this country are extremely important when it comes to affecting big changes in our culture. I'm sure all of us right now are familiar with some of the controversy uh, that some very large companies are having right now because of how impactful their brand is on culture. Um, I love walking up to businesses and seeing this logo on our door, and it means a lot to me, and I can only imagine that if I, you know, were a person in recovery working for this particular business, it would mean that much more. So I think it's great that we are able to offer that. And then lastly, we'll round it out with a few of our uh, other offerings here. So recovery-friendly consultation, all that means is that if my constituents are having a concern related to substance misuse disorder in the workplace, they can call or email me. Um, I don't profess to be the guru on all things recovery-friendly. Um, I definitely do have a lot of knowledge on the subject, but what I am able to do, as I mentioned earlier, is 
uh, coordinate with my dense network, both locally and across the country, to find answers if they're inquiring about things I don't necessarily know offhand. And I just really look forward to uh, brainstorming solutions for companies. That's one of the great things about this position and what it's allowed me to do. Harm reduction supplies. So we are Hamilton County Public Health. We are a health department. I am in the harm reduction division of the health department. So we certainly have a, a lot of naloxone and fentanyl test strips um, at our disposal. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we're able to provide Narcan, which can reverse an overdose and save a life and fentanyl test strips, which can detect the lethal substance fentanyl. And some of our constituent businesses allow their employees and patrons to acquire those things anonymously via grab and go boxes that we're installing for them. Um, and remember, both of those supplies are also available for free via the QR code that I showed you earlier. That, and we also feature that on the posters that we disseminate. But in either case, um, we give our partners training by one of our staff members on the correct usage of those supplies should they decide they want them in their workplace. Um, I always just argue that it's a good supplement to a first aid kit. That's kind of the line that we use here definitely when it comes to businesses in Hamilton County because you just never know. Policy and protocol resources. This is something I'm extremely excited about. So I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a doctor. Um, I am not able, nor would I want to provide any kind of formal legal or medical counsel to my constituent businesses. Um, I always recommend that they seek competent counsel when they have a question that is beyond my scope that really gets into some litigious or medical territory. But with some recent grant money that we just got, we are paying a labor law attorney and a human resources professional to scour the universe of all the progressive policy that's out there in the workplace and to put it into one really great comprehensive compendium that we're going to be able to share with all of our designees free of charge. And we're thinking that that's going to be done by the end of April. So I'm very excited about that. And what my, this is something I can kind of uh, give you a little sneak peek. What we're finding through this work is that um, there really are no, you know, gold standards for policies in the workplace that support people in recovery or that help individuals who are suffering from substance use disorder. There are a lot of people across the country right now who are actively developing these kinds of toolkits, um, but there is no template, like I said, or gold standard that exists already um, to address effectively the disease of, of substance use disorder in the workplace. So I'm happy to say that we're kind of on the cutting edge there and uh, hopefully will be a good um, kind of influence on the national level with some of the connections I have. So the Substance Use Recovery and Workplace Safety Program, if you don't know what this is, you definitely should. Um, the Bureau of Workers' Compensation in Ohio has a really terrific program that allows eligible businesses to get reimbursed for services like formal policy review and development, training on substance use disorder and related topics for employees, supervisor training on how to manage people in recovery, and drug testing for employees who identify as being in recovery. So if you're eligible, and I think the one caveat is that you cannot be self-insured, but if you're eligible, those services can all be reimbursed up to 100%. Um, I'm working with my local BWC representative to help promote that service among my designees because it's a natural fit that if you're going to be recovery friendly, you would want to take advantage of some of these free services and why not. Um, so I encourage you, if you're on the call and you don't know who your representative is, to definitely look into this program, find out who they are, and do some research. And then as for future updates, um, as I grow this thing out, remember we just launched in June, so I still, still think it's kind of a fledgling program, even though we've got a year almost under our belt. Uh, but I'm always coming across new services that we're able to offer to our employees. So I always keep them abreast of those things. So that is what we do. Um, now, what? how the next question is, what are you requiring of the business? What do they have to do to join this initiative? Um, and I'm happy to say that we make it very simple and it, be, it can be accomplished in four very easy steps. So... First, a member of the company's senior management 
uh, or their human resources executive has to send me what we call a letter of intent stating that they want their workplace to join the program. We've got a standard template for that so they don't have to reinvent the wheel, but basically the letter of intent just indicates that the business wants to join the initiative and that they understand what it entails. And that's something that I keep filed away in my records. Second, and this is probably the most important for me, um, the business has to make a formal declaration to their employees indicating that they are joining the initiative and what that means for them. Um, again, we have a very standard template that businesses can follow so they don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, but the business does have to make that declaration through whatever channels uh, they use to communicate with their employees, whether that's staff meetings, uh, teams notifications, a company-wide email, all those things are okay with me. I just have to get some kind of proof that their staff was notified. So in most cases, uh, I'm copied on an all-staff email or given meeting minutes, something like that. In that declaration, they're also indicating that the posters that we ask them to put up are on the premises and where to find them. Third, uh, like I was mentioning, um, businesses must post at least one of those resource posters on their physical premises for each of their sites. Um, and those are there to help guide their employees on all those available resources in Hamilton County. So Relink is one of the people listed on there, so go Relink. Um, and then there are other local 24-7 hotlines that we're advertising along with that QR code. And then fourth and final, we ask that the, hold on one second here, the business's human resource team or their senior management, sometimes those, you've got people wearing multiple hats, uh, whoever has to attend a brief training with me to learn about the full scope of our services and how to solicit them. So I usually host that virtually on Teams. Uh, or Zoom, but I'm not shy about packing up all my stuff and going to the workplace myself. Whatever is most convenient for them is what I do. I also make myself available to their employee base. So if they don't feel comfortable explaining the initiative via a declaration or they want to supplement that, I can come out to the workplace or coordinate something virtually to let their employees know what this is and what it means for them. And then in order to stay businesses, uh, in order to stay designated, we do have a couple of annual requirements, both of which can be accomplished in a single email. Number one, we ask them to remind their staff about any existing alcohol, tobacco, and drug policies that they might have. We're not asking them to change them necessarily. We're kind of hoping that, you know, on this continuum of recovery friendly that they want to gradually become more and more so over time, but they do have to remind their staff about any existing policies they have once a year. And then the other thing is once a year, they have to remind their staff about our program. Um, I can't guarantee that all of them are going to include this in their onboarding procedures. So at least once a year, I like to make sure that everybody is kept abreast of the fact that they're a part of this initiative. And that's it. Those are all of our requirements. And again, we understand that senior management officials are busy, so we try to keep this process as simple as possible. And what we're doing is incredibly similar to what was started in New Hampshire. So if you're interested, if you're on the call and you're interested in maybe learning more about recovery-friendly workplace programs or about specific services, or maybe you're in Hamilton County and you wanna join, um, all of that's great. You can email me, you can call me. I'll give you all a minute to copy this down if you like. Um, Again, if it weren't for the help that I received from other states, such as New Hampshire, Nevada, and North Carolina, I really never could have got this program off the ground. Um, and all of the RFW affiliates across the country, we all get together for a multi-state community of practice on a quarterly basis. And I'm happy to forward you more information about that as well, so you can connect with uh, some of the same people that I connected with if you want to learn from them. So I want to say just thank you so much for your time. Um, it really means a lot to me and to Hamilton County Public Health that you all are interested in these programs and helping uh, in the stigma of addiction and recovery. And I, I don't think we realize how important it is that we take this fight to the workplace, um, because right now there aren't a lot of resources out there that really hone in on or target the workplace, which is where a lot of us spend most of our day. Um, 
And just remember that when people in, in companies feel like they have resources to be successful at work, they're gonna feel more valued and they're gonna be more engaged and more productive employees. That's all I have, thank you. Well, thank you, Tyler, for sharing uh, all that wonderful information about the work you're doing there in Hamilton County. And I, I hadn't really known all that you had pulled uh, from the other states. So it's great to see how these things get started and they yep. get spread. And I know it's definitely one of your goals to, to spread the share the information and spread it throughout Ohio for other areas that are interested. Um, I had put in the chat, if anybody has any questions to please type them in the chat or you can even raise your hand. We can go ahead and, and call on you. I can, I think technology wise, I can figure out how to pull you off uh, webinar and let you ask questions. Um, while you're thinking of those, I'll, I'll ask a, a couple, Tyler. Mm -hmm. As you're going out and, and doing this program, what are some of the biggest challenges you face like with getting companies to come on board? Like what are some of their biggest objections? Sure, it, that's that's a very good question. Um, I've had a couple of company meetings, pitches, whatever you wanna call them, where um, they ask me, what's the catch? You know, what 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 do I not have to gain from this? It's totally free of charge. And honestly, I, I don't know what to tell them because I think it's a lot of great resources for free. Um, but I have come across some hurdles where I've really had to read between the lines because people aren't going to be upfront about the stigma that they might have surrounding substance misuse disorder in the workplace. I think for those companies who have declined or who have wavered in their interest to join the program, a lot of that is rooted back in stigma, um, just like saying you're a second chance employer. Um, that might convey to the wrong kind of person that we're working with convicts or people who aren't worthy of employment. Um, so I think that the big hurdle, again, is um, trying to overcome that stigma and getting people to recognize that being in recovery is a good thing. And my program is not called Drug Friendly Hamilton County. It's called Recovery Friendly Hamilton County. Yeah, that's good. What are you, what are you, this is kind of a little off topic, but I think it's this topic of stigma comes up in so many of our educational things that we do. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things you see in Hamilton County or just some ideas, maybe there are even your personal ideas for addressing this stigma? Is it that we just keep coming after it? I know Ohio has launched some, I think, yeah. quite effective campaigns uh, in addressing stigma. I mean, have you seen anything that you think works? Just keep yeah yeah, yeah. Over? i think um I, i'm not i don't know all the data but i know shatterproof the organization they have a stigma recovery index that is a really good kind of proxy measure of what stigma looks like in certain communities um i i think it's been utilized in ohio and various counties but again i i can't say for sure um, but I think those campaigns are great. We've all seen the Beat the Stigma advertisements. Mm -hmm. uh, Hamilton County Public Health actually invested quite a bit in our own local um, campaign to help beat the stigma that was featured on various uh, advertisements across the city. But I think the initiative that I'm doing in and of itself is, is a really good um, way to propel anti-stigma across the county because it's you're, you're reaching out to some very influential brands to do that. Yeah. I think the more and more companies start getting on and on exactly that will yeah. help reduce the stigma. There's one question that came in over the chat and then I have one other question mm -hmm. for you as well. Uh, this one came in, uh, do employers have questions or concerns about employees involved in medication assisted treatment or taking that MAT? Yes, in their recovery? Um, yeah, MAT or MOUD, that is a very good question. Um, I'm trying to get away from using medication assisted treatment because for any disease you need to have treatment. That just kind of goes without saying. I don't know why we need to um, signify uh, substance use disorder as being distinct from any other kind of disease, but that's the common terminology. That's what we all use. And the answer is yes. I have had a couple of employers who have expressed um, some concern, and I'm trying to work with my policy people right now to see what the most progressive angle is for that. Um, and really, it comes down to any policy that you have surrounding medication usage, which is should be blanketed for any kind of medication, whether it's for substance use disorder, diabetes, what have you. And that's that if if it can cause impairment in the workplace, it's something that needs to be discussed, um, that needs to be on record, and that you can work with your employer to let them know um, what your capacities are, at least for the interim, when it's having that that kind of impact or effect on your ability to handle certain tasks. Um, but yeah, the concern is there. 
I think that the companies are getting a lot more progressive when it comes to MOUD. Um, and they're just recognizing that it's a medication for any other kind of disease. And yes, it may cause some kind of impairment, but there are medications for other diseases that are not um, substance use disorder that also cause impairment. And the policy usually is, well, you just need to communicate that with your human resource individual. It needs to be held in confidence. And they need to be aware, at least in the short term or long term, of what your capacities are while you're on that medication. Yeah, and I think this issue also applies even to like mental health, you yeah. know, in which you take, you know, the the numbers we're seeing with mental health treatment, you know, and the people that are on different medications for that, and and then they're and they're helping. Yeah, they can also affect alertness or sleepiness. Right. And all these exactly. Kind of that can exactly. be issues. So I think there's other areas where that is being addressed already, and hopefully that yeah. can get lumped in as sure. well. And people have a, a lot of uh, ADA protections. We have to keep that in mind too. Substance use disorder is recognized by the Americans with Disabilities Act. I hadn't really thought about that, but yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and I was thinking too, all like ADD medications. I mean, a yeah. lot of employees are on medications like that, so all that would be lumped into that. And yeah, yeah. Medication. And if you're if you're in a position where you're going through treatment and you're um, potentially operating heavy machinery, you know, it goes without saying that that's something that you should be communicating um with your you know personnel management people to make sure that you're not putting yourself in a position of harming either your own person or others around you absolutely i don't see any other questions in the chat if there are any please put them in i was just going to ask as we conclude um if you have um a success story or something you would share as you do this, like an impact story or just, you know, one of the highlights from, from your work to, to share with us as, a, as an encouragement. Uh, I know up here in Summit County where it's getting launched, so all the stories will be great. Yeah, so um, after we reached our first 15 companies, our county government came on board and gave us a press conference where we were able to acknowledge um, the great kind of initial support that we were giving. So that was something that I was very proud of, winning the Workforce Champion Award. Uh, but in terms of anecdotes, there's a particular company that I work with, and I'm not going to, um, you know, put them out there, but they uh, actively and knowingly hire people who are in recovery. And I've heard that through some of the programs and resources that we've been able to offer them, um, it has helped sustain that employee's uh, recovery and uh, just help them, you know, do the great work and be the great person that they are. That's wonderful. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure you're not going to get to hear all the stories. That's sure. the, whenever we're in this work, we always have to measure impact, but it's not always, you can't always hear all yeah. the stories. So anytime yeah. that you can get them and share them, I'm, I'm very big on sharing the stories of hope because it's easy for yeah. us to look at the problem and get discouraged. But yeah, exactly. Good things are happening. We get to see it through the relink lens a lot of things that are happening in recovery, things that are happening reentry. So it can be daunting, but there are a lot of great things happening. So, absolutely, Tyler, I wanted to thank you again for joining us. Thank you for the work you're doing and also your passion to share it with mm -hmm. so many other organizations. So we will. Uh, this was recorded, and we'll we'll share it uh, as much as we possibly can. Okay, great. Well, thank you, and uh, thanks again, everyone, for your time. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Everybody have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.